Mathura was a, a singularly gruesome case. It's a very young girl who was picked up with her friend and she was taken by the police and uh, she was raped by the police while in custody and paraded. Now, it had a very uh, torturous court because it went on to have observations that she didn't have any bruises. Uh, she was a consenting partner to that act of rape and you know a lot of that came out in that case law. Mm -hmm. It was corrected to an extent. The High Court held that no, it was a case of rape. Supreme Court took a view. What was really wrong with the Mathura case was that you put woman's character or the fact that because she didn't have any injuries on her body, she had consented to the act of rape. So there was a complete outcry amongst the women. There were protests all over the country. There were protests outside the Supreme Court and the amendment to the law came in and that is where the custodial rape mm. became a uh, very significant in the statute book and attracted a very stringent punishment for the police if they took a woman into custody and a woman was raped in custody. So there, were a C, there was a whole skew of amendments that came into the rape law. But those amendments were all right for 1980 when they came. Just fast forward it forward to 2013 when the Nirbhaya incident happened. Now, that girl was not necessarily raped or an intercourse in the traditional sense. There were objects, everything used upon her. So, what happened with the law was that you have section 377, which is uh, uh, intercourse against the order of nature, which is homosexuality and everything. That is what it was supposed to address. And you have something like outraging the modesty of women. Now, if you do such a gruesome act of use of objects and everything on a woman and that woman died, are you going to put that assault not as a rape and as serious as that and push it under section 377, mm. which is primarily intended against the order of nature or under 354, which is outraging the modesty of a woman. Mm.